Welcome back, my fellow duplicants, to Oxygen Not Included. Today, I have an experiment for you. Now, this experiment is based off of a farm that I have in the Mega Base Challenge, and that is a simple, very simple, very accessible farm that you can set up, which uses mealwood and carbon dioxide to kind of make sure that it maintains its pressure. Now, I mentioned at one point that this mealwood could then be fed to hatches, or there was somebody else that was actually mentioned. There was a lot all kinds of these comments and different ideas they're all coming together and the idea is that essentially if you feed the hatches inside of a mealwood farm that you are no longer maintaining so you're not harvesting it that those hatches could essentially turn convert meal lice that forms off of the mealwood plant and turn that into coal providing you with a infinite supply of power for a coal generator which a coal generator can then have carbon dioxide scrubbed and you can convert clean water into uh, dirty water, uh, polluted water, and then have that polluted water converted back the uh, steam into clean water without using any extra byproducts. So it can be a closed system that just produces power. And that's the idea. However, the one question that has remained, and it's actually sparked up a little bit of discussion, is just how efficient is this farm system? Or is it possible? Does it actually work? Like how much can these hatches, how much do they have to eat before they actually start to produce coal? Now, there's a couple of different comments that have sparked up, you know, that sort of thing right here. I, and one of them was Matt. Matt was talking about this one right here. Is they're talking about they need to consume 150 kilograms of material. However, we also talked down here that when eating food, it is generated coals based on the calories consumed. So the real question here is, which one is working better and how much does it take and how if we do the math, um, how big of a farm do we actually need in order for a hatch to supply enough coal to power a generator, let's say 24-7, so that you continuously get 600 or so watts. So that brings me to this experiment. As you can see, I have many planter boxes with mealwood inside of them, and I will disable auto harvesting on these so that my duplicate does not come back here and harvest this. We're going to let the plant age out and then drop its meal lice. I have one, three, five, 10, 15, and 20 set up stacked just to kind of get a different idea of how much this hatch is going to convert. Okay, for starters, we can see right here that the hatches do not consume the mealwood seed at all. I'll actually just run right past that. One thing I am going to do to my test is I'm going to change the way I'm doing this naphtha lock a little bit. There's a small chance that when you put like a door and this right next to each other, that, that that could potentially introduce a lot of this oxygen in there, which is under extremely high pressure. We're talking 1,800 kilograms. So I don't know. There's some weird stuff when, when you get into this stuff, but I just want to make sure I'm not doing that. And I also want to make sure that the temperature over here is not flowing in. So I'm going to make sure to put this under vacuum. There you go. That's kind of cool. Oh, no, that... <laughs> okay. That caused a couple of my hatches to die. I was really wondering why the hatches over here never go into this liquid. If they get into this liquid column, they're dead. And it was because, I guess, they wouldn't want to jump into this tile. For some odd reason, they just have a, you know, a choice that they don't want to do that. I don't know. Weird. <laughs> Oops. Killed them again. <laughs> The weird things you see once you get into the debug tools. All right, here we go, all right, yep. Okay, so now everything here is ready to harvest. So that was after three cycles, as you would imagine. And you can see they're all becoming ready to harvest in the order that they were planted. Okay, so on cycle five, we can see here now that the, the plants are going from their wiggle animation to kind of the dried up animation. So they're no longer really animated at this point. Cycle five, important. We're taking it all in. Okay, so here we go. They dropped their meal lice at the beginning of cycle 57 right there. So six cycles in and the plants have dropped, which makes sense, right? So it takes three for a domestic growth cycle and then three more if you don't actually harvest them. And this little hatch has eaten one meal lice. Nom, 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 nom. Look, look at how happy he is. Yeah, yeah, you know you want it. Come on. I gotta watch this guy so close. How many is he gonna eat? Okay, so he ate some more. 
He's eaten twice. I don't really know exactly how much... Okay, so this is 800 calories. Okay, I'm gonna have to count calories. That's what's going on here. So twice. And that reduced the calories to 750. So, and there's another spot in here where... 750. Mm-hmm. He's had 50 calories. Six. This hatch is eaten six times. 18. 18 in one day. 25. I'm watching this hatch, just waiting for it to poop. The things I do for science. <laughs> okay, so at this point, I've watched this hatch run around and eat meal lice over and over and over again. And he's eaten 150 times, but not given off any coal at all. And I think if we look around, you know, some of these hatches that have less space, they actually do their eating animation a little bit more. At least it seems like they would. Or I can actually force this one to potentially do more if I just do this. There we go. The thing is that there is no coal in here. So they're eating meal lice, but it's not turning into coal pretty much ever. However, that's not all bad because I've had another idea. The reason we were using carbon dioxide was to preserve the food so that it wouldn't go bad. However, when food goes rotten, it becomes... You know, basically, it becomes X amount of kilograms of, of waste. So, if we convert this from carbon dioxide, let's say we take the coal generator and put it outside so that it isn't inside of here, and we replace this with polluted oxygen, I think we'll have a much different result. Okay, so I replaced all the gas with polluted oxygen, so now we should see that the freshness of this meal lice is going to go down, and it should go down, hopefully, quickly. And this, this is how we're going to get coal out of this system. So we can see here that the change per cycle is 25%. So that's good. We'll be able to actually make this stuff go from being, you know, meal lice to a rot pile in four cycles after it comes off of the mealwood itself. All right, so here we go. Boom! A bunch of rot piles. So I noticed that the rot piles are not all the same size, depending on how much of the meal lice the hatch is actually eaten. So that, that throws one variable into the mix. I'll do kind of a time test, though, just to see what happens after this. But to start things off, let's go ahead and see just uh, if this thing will eventually make some coal. Come on, hatch. Give me some coal. <laughs> so one crazy variable here is that the hatch can choose between the meal lice or the rotten meal lice. If it even wants the rotten meal lice at all. Bam! All right. Now we got a bunch of polluted dirt. Because <laughs> that uh, rotten meal lice breaks down. So at this point, it's giving off loads of polluted oxygen. Germs? No, no germs. Out of curiosity, let's see what happened down here. This hatch cleaned up that resource. I have some mealwood seed. Not a big deal. Some meal lice. No coal. Boom! All right, so there was some coal right there. All right, so now I'm going to remove all the seeds just to see how much coal I actually have inside of here. Seeds kind of blocking my view. So right there, I have 215 kilograms. Up here... 102 kilograms, so I know it's working at this point. I actually am getting some coal out of this. Okay, so I have a nice clean environment now. So let me go ahead and paste in a couple more hatches. That'll be starting from zero. This is kind of a weird experiment. I thought it would be really easy, but there's a lot of little things that can go wrong as it's kind of slightly inconsistent. So there's one hatch, two, three, four five and six so that'll be good and i'm gonna go for about 10 cycles to see just how much coal i get out of this all right well i made a few mistakes in this experiment here um unfortunately i didn't really have a high quantity of gas so a couple of the plants were were bouncing off the the, the gas pressure limit so i tried to paint in some more gas and unfortunately i painted in carbon dioxide instead of polluted oxygen kind of throwing the whole test out of whack so I got to reset. We're going to start it up again uh, from the next time that this meal wood drops down. And that will be with a fresh set of hatches as well. All right, so the test is starting now on 80, cycle 85. 
let's see if we see any coal get produced here. Okay, so this time I'm not seeing any coal at all, and that matches what I saw the first time around. But there's certainly, certainly these hatches are not just converting this meal ice directly into coal, because I just don't see any anywhere. All right, so now things are turning into rod piles. So we started on cycle 85, now that we're on 89, which is four later, we're eating rot piles. Now will we generate coal? <laughs> Having a large one of these in your base is going to be really annoying because you're going to get a lot of food decay, so... Hmm, 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 hmm. Not seeing a bunch of coal just yet. What I have noticed, though, is that down here, where there's just one plant, that's all consumed. Plant with just three, that's all consumed. Uh, the one with five, there really isn't a lot left. This one plant right here got harvested, unfortunately, so it's it's a little weird. Okay, so now I've got polluted dirt on cycle 90. So now we should start seeing some coal. There we go. That's the first chunk of coal we got right there. So 100 kilograms. Ah, here's another chunk, 104. A, hey, and that number is the exact same, or more or less. We got 101 compared to 104, right within about four cycles. And one, another notable observation here is that everything is either bubbled off and taken up space by cycle 91. So within six cycles, everything is gone, no matter what you have. So it seems like 15 mealwood plants per hatch is the magic number. Or right around there. Oh, uh-oh. I had a plastic tile break for a moment. And it's flooded my base base with the oxygen. Crap! <laughs> <laughs> now that's just rude. Come on, game. Stupid plastic tile. Messing up my whole experiment yet again. Alright, so time for some results. Surprisingly, this experiment was a little bit harder to conduct than I thought it was going to be. I thought it would be real simple, but I've spent about as much time on it as I have, so here are the results. Uh, from what I was able to gather, about 15 mealwood plants is a good quantity per hatch. Now, it may be plus or minus a few to be the absolute optimal, but right now I've experimented with it, and that's the number I'd go with. Um, 20 did not result in any more coal. Uh, so that resulted in about 100 kilograms after after four cycles and if you look at a mealwood plant the full life cycle of that mealwood plant is six cycles so taking six based on that I was able to come up with about 17 kilograms per cycle is kind of how much that hatch is converting the mealwood and all the different other byproducts that happen with that mealwood actually rotting. So that's what happens right there. You're able to get about 15 kilograms and, and of that, the amount of power in joules and kilojoules is 10.2 um, kilojoules per day that you're able to generate. That's its potential energy. Now, if we compare this to a coal generator, so one coal generator uses up um, one kilogram per second and 600 seconds in a cycle right there, they're giving you a total power output for that day of 360 kilojoules. So you can kind of figure that out, that you would need 35 hatches and 525 mealwood plants in order to power just one coal generator 24-7. However, this number over here is not something to really shy away from. That can run some smaller components. However, I think the big takeaway for this experiment right here is not the obvious thing that we started to, to look at at the beginning. Um, what I noticed is that once we went to that polluted dirt, or whatever it was that polluted something right there, we were, we were expelling quite a bit of polluted oxygen. So... Well, we started with the objective to get power out of this plant, to generate coal. Um, I think what we ended up with is a way to generate oxygen for your base. Now, it is polluted oxygen, but it can be germ-free polluted oxygen, which is still breathable. Not to mention there are methods for cleaning polluted oxygen and making clean oxygen out of that. So I think that's an experiment for another time, but that might be the more beneficial reason to make one of these plants setups right here. 
So while this all started with Gene's comment, which is how effective is feeding hatches with meal lice and how much hatches would you need for one cold generator? Well, the answer is a lot. <laughs> a surprising amount. I thought it would be a little bit more effective. And as the game continues to progress and evolve, I'm, I'm sure that with the numbers might change depending on how those hatches actually respond. But I think we left with something that might be potentially far more valuable, and that's a way to generate oxygen. Polluted oxygen, but generate oxygen nevertheless. So thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you guys have found this video somewhat informative or helpful. So if I've earned your subscription, then thank you so much for that. And for all of you guys that have been supporting the channel for as long as this series has been going on, thank you so very much. It's pretty awesome to see the response that I, I'm getting on my videos that I am today. So thank you guys for all of, the, all of your support. Have a wonderful day, guys. Guys, stay awesome. Peace. Brothgar out.